What is up everyone, it is DJ Rick Webb and we are doing the long overdue full garage tour. Let's get into it. So, the last time I did a garage tour of all the gear that I have, I was actually at apartment building. So I actually had two garages in an apartment building. It's been quite a while. We moved into this house in 2021. In uh, February is when we uh, bought the place. We didn't move it until about May, but the garage was like a project. This is, if you can't tell by the lighting and everything, this was a dream garage build for me. A poor man's dream garage, I'll go with that. Not like a full blown out, but I wanted to make this garage actually somewhere that I wanted to come out, work, play with gear, etc., film videos for you guys, and just really make it super efficient. I'm a super OCD person, and I love building efficiency in everything I do, and this whole entire garage, literally every Everything has a place, everything is organized, it makes sense to some degree. There's still some things I'm trying to work out and some things that need to be tweaked up, but I do want a preference. If you want to learn more about what I built here, we're going to go through all the gear in this video, but if you want to learn more about the building of this process, go over to my Taco Rick channel. I documented the whole process from when I first started with this and we power washed the floor to get it nice and clean. I didn't do any epoxy or anything like that because the floor is really pretty bad and again trying to stay on a budget but I show painting the whole entire thing installing this hexagrid light system adding heating and cooling to this yes that right there is a mini split it's actually rated for like four times the size of this thing and it is wonderful we're in North Carolina it gets into the 90s 100 degrees in the summertime this thing can keep it in the 60s in here it is amazing but yeah that's a DIY kit and I made a whole video on how you install that on my taco Rick channel so if you want to learn more about building out garage for efficiency and all that go check out the taco Rick channel Anyways, I'm gonna open these garage doors because it makes it a little bit easier to show the stuff at the front of the garage and we're gonna go through everything. So just looking in, it is nighttime outside, but this is a two car garage, obviously. And uh, the way this garage normally works is this is the parking spot for uh, my fiance's RAV4 normally, or it is a project space. And being that we are kind of always doing projects in this house, it is currently being used for project work. We're building some cabinets and shelves and staining them and stuff, etc. But this side is all DJ gear. And it is kind of packed in here because it is currently the off season for us here in North Carolina. So a lot of this stuff actually normally stays in my trailer and uh, now it's kind of tucked in here. There's still a walkway, but normally like this right here is not in here. So we need to go through all the gear, let's go. So let's start with the stuff that's out in the open. This right here is a uh, Burfa, big Burfa. And what is inside? This giant road case, if you are unfamiliar with my channel, is my custom turntable booth that I built. I built the whole entire case that it also goes in as well. Go check out my channel if you want to learn more about this. I use this in every single one of my gigs. Up top here, this is the little stuff that goes with Burfa to the events and uh, I don't necessarily like this bag I need to get something better for this maybe a little hard shell or something But this is where I keep my sound switch control one and it's where I keep my LED sign that goes on the front of My booth and all of our wireless DMX dongles are in here as well And like I said normally that actually just stays in my trailer I don't take it out because I use it every single weekend up on top here We have my rock and roller with the shelf This is for my ceremonies and yet again this also normally just lives in my trailer 24 or seven and normally that has the ceremony rack which are over here but before we get to there we're going to start with all the gear in the middle so i'm going to go ahead and shift burfa over and we're going to check out all the stuff in the middle of the garage and i'll say it again normally all this is in my trailer so this is just wide open normally to come in and out of starting off out front here i have my jacks and jack stands for basically anything to do with the truck the car etc and then we have all of our weighted sandbags so i think i have 10 of them they're just a bunch of weighted sandbags there if we need them we grab them try to keep all the heavy stuff towards the front of the garage to make it easy. Hanging on the side here, we have our spare scrims. So these are table black scrims. These are tripod black scrims, all sitting there ready to go. Right above that up here, we have our O-clamps. We have our truss pins. 
and then we have some air wall hangers over there on the side. Up top, we have two Mackie Fump Goes, two little battery powered speakers for what we need. Up here are our three watt lasers in this bag right here. These are all of our pin spots. We have a total, we're missing a bag somewhere. We have a total of 12 as of right now. So there's four in each one of these bags. Then we have a spare Wash FX2 just laying out here. This one's actually pretty beat up and damaged. We have Wash FX hexes in this bag right here. So there's two Wash FX hexes. This is all of our DMX lighting. These are all of our DMX cords that are in this. If you can't tell, everything up here doesn't get used a ton. It's kind of our rarity stuff that we leave up on the top shelves. Everything we keep kind of above, kind of just grabbing height, is normally stuff that we don't use necessarily every single weekend. We use it on occasion. Below that, we have our projectors. So these are our two projectors as of now. We'll probably be buying more in the coming future. If anyone is wondering, these are the Epson 1250U power light projectors. They are basically thousand dollar projectors and we love them. We have two of them and we use them quite a bit actually, to be honest. Down here in these bags, each one of these has four wash effects twos. So there are four in each and basically these are set up so that if we have a wash event where we're washing the ceiling, grab four and go because normally you need at least four to wash a ceiling in our experience. Right beside that we have our American DJ Haze generator. Doesn't get used as much anymore because venues are really cracking down and not allowing it. We have another uh, three watt laser right here in this bag. So we got two of them at this point. We have all of our cold spark powder. Again, some of the stuff I really need to find a better method for storage, but um, this is where all of our spare cold spark powder lives right here. We have two brand new still in the box Mackie Fump 215 XTs. I need to make a video on these. Haven't got around to it. Also need to make a video on the Mackie Fump Goes. Shout out to Mackie. They actually sent over these products. I haven't got a chance to actually look at them or do anything with them. Need to get on that. Coming over here we have kind of repair area. We're currently getting all of these. Uh, the tweeters are blown. This was an installation job. All the tweeters are blown in these speakers and we're currently getting them sent out for warranty repairs from JBL. In the middle right here the these are my two JBL Purex 715 XLF subs. And if you can't tell, one of them is completely torn apart because the woofer is blown. Right here is the woofer. It is completely uh, seized up. Not too mad because those subs, I literally just pound the crap out of them at events when I was using the Purex rig with the 715 XLF subs and the 712 tops. And uh, they survived six years of constant abuse, hundreds of events, and one of the woofers gave out. Got a new one on order, but you know, parts right now, it takes forever. It literally just shipped I ordered it like two months ago it finally just shipped so that'll be getting repaired and fixed and back working the new speaker only cost me 300 bucks so that's a win-win because that's a $900 subwoofer all day long I'm also gonna point out while I'm here just an efficiency thing and let me come around the back side because it'll make a little bit more sense but for the most part, everything in the garage is on wheels for efficiency. Even my shelving units are on wheels right there. They're on wheels. The subwoofers are on a caster cart to make it really easy to move them around. Now, I uh, guess while we're over here, well, we got a spare rock and roller cart on top right here. We really need to get a couple more of those, to be honest. Um, beside them, we have our stacks of cold sparks. We have one, two, three, and there's actually a fourth case, which I guess I'll probably preference right now. This is not all of the gear that we own. We've moved a lot of the stuff that we don't use as often to our storage units. So for you guys that don't know, I actually own three companies. Fusion Sound Lighting is one of my three companies. I have a e-commerce division and I have a Christmas light division, which is actually gonna start doing gutter cleaning as well. I got people that run all these aspects of the business. I just own them and I coach them, etc. With the Christmas light division, I had to get storage units to store all the Christmas lights that we have, which is a buttload. And we will be going to that storage unit in this video, but it'll be at the tail end of this video because I have to go tomorrow because I can only get in there between 6 and 9 p.m. But uh, we got like stage decks, trussing, and all the stuff that we don't necessarily use on the regular is all over at the storage unit. So yeah, we'll get to that eventually. This bottom case down here, and this is something we really haven't made a video on that we really need to, these are cold spark batteries. So in there are two cold spark batteries. They can also be used to power movers as well. And speaking of movers, these right here are the both lighting 
movers right here. The bottom one are our MH150 white spots, two of those, and the top is our two black wash movers. All this is Bow Lighting products, and if you guys didn't get the hint, that is my e-commerce division. Bow Lighting, we are the only US-based dealer. It's Bow Lighting USA. Website is going to be coming soon. If you are not following the company on Instagram, it's at both lighting USA um, but we sell all of the both lighting products here in America and that way you guys get all the awesome purchase protection for buying Chinese products and if you run into any issues we can fix them etc I'll show you over here on the workbench right now we actually have a few lights that are getting repaired right now absolutely free to the customer because we warranty them for a whole entire year and we actually support them pretty much all the time so if you buy from us we take care of you but anyways that's pretty much everything in the center I'm now gonna move Burfa back over and we're gonna move over to this wall and work our way around all this gear. There's even gear over there. So this wall over here actually contains pretty much the stuff we use the absolute most is over here in this corner of the garage with the exception of the top shelf, of course, because the top shelf are around everything in the garage. The top shelves are the stuff we don't use as often. This right here is the pretty much pole corner. So everything related to speaker poles, trust stands, crank stands, it's all in this corner. This bag up front right here, this is a Tukey bag that we got to replace our Rockville bag, but uh, this contains the collapsible totems. These are the big ones that can go up to eight feet, the black ones, but the, the Rockville bags broke, so we got this custom bag made from uh, Tukey cases. It was expensive as hell, but um, it works really well to store these. Moving that out of the way, you can see now all of the speaker poles, so here's two speaker poles, here's two speaker poles. These are the poles for the gravity stands. There's more speaker poles. These are all of our smaller Rockville collapsible totems. We have one, two, three, four of them right there. They're all back here because we don't use them as often. And then we have two of the Global Trust DT39L crank stands. We don't use them as much anymore because, you know, we're not doing as big of events, but when we do school events, those come out all the time. That's a little bit of what's all in the pole corner. Side notes, we really need more gravity stands and they are so hard to come up across right now. Over here, we have two of our truss plates. Um, I don't know why we actually have them here now because all the trussing is actually at the storage unit. So there are two more of these at the storage unit. We have two, our two gravity stand base plates are down here. And then all of our base plates for our rock fill totems are also down there. Moving up to the top to go through all the stuff up here. We have twinkle lights up here. We have all sorts of hanging wire and stuff to uh, rig up and hang. Bistro lights, twinkle lights, drapery, however we're doing it in a venue that you use a lot. Up there we have our 25 foot, there's 10 of them, 25 foot bistro lights. So they're the plastic LED bistro lights. This is our twinkle light curtains. So these can attach to pipe and drape. And then we have two more spools of twinkle lights right there as well. Down below here, these are our turbo sound IP 300s. We pretty much use those strictly for fill occasions. They're, they're really not used that often. I'm actually I have these listed for sale right now, and we'll get to that in a second, but I have gear for sale. There's a link in the description down below if you guys wanna check out all the used gear I have for sale and the both lighting open box stuff. I have some stuff. The TurboSound IP300s are also one of those that have been on there for sale, but we still use them from time to time. Next to that, and this ties into the bottom things, we have our LD Systems Maui 5 Goes. So these are the tops. Our subs are right here. And then we have our Ceremony Audio Rigs. So I have two of them here. I own personally two of them. These are the Yamaha MG6 mixers that go with the Ceremony Rigs. And then these are the subs and the poles for the LD System Maui 5 Go. So this is a Ceremony Kit. This is a Ceremony Kit right beside it. At one point, I actually owned four of those, but I have since sold two of those to other guys in the company. So I have two other DJs in the companies that fully own their own Ceremony Rigs at this point, and I only have two here. And we really need to buy Another one, we're expanding and it's just hitting me uh, as to we just hired two more DJs and I need to get at least one more ceremony rig for when we get maxed out on some dates coming up in May. Then beside them, these are just bags. One of them's a roller bag. One of them's just a big bag, just like those bags over there. And these are for our other movers. So down below here, these are all of our ADJ InnoSpot Pros. So this is the big case that holds four of them. And then these are the smaller cases that hold two each. So when my DJ come and they have totems and movers for their weekend 
they come over here, they grab their base plates, they grab their totems, and they grab a bag and throw two movers in it because most of the time, and most of my guys, they don't own any trailers, so they're not taking all of these flight cases. That's more for our bigger stuff. So they'll just take two movers, put them in a bag with padding and stuff, take them to the event with their collapsible totems, and rock out the show. All right, moving right along. In the center, we have all of our tables. So we have a couple high boy tables. We have some smaller collapsible tables that we use for ceremonies. For the most part, all of my guys kind of have their own collapsible tables, so I haven't really had a need to own too many of them. I just own a few, and we use these ones at our wedding shows or trade shows quite often. Now, coming back up to the top, a lot of this is junk spare parts, to be honest. This top one is a bunch of hooks and stuff for organization. This bottom one is full of all sorts of XLR connectors and things to build out cases. Like you guys might have seen some of my case builds, a lot of those spare parts from those case builds, the arms, the connectors, all that goes into that tote. It's just randomness. If I need a spare XLR part of some sort, I go to that tote. Moving right along up here, this is just a spare bag if we need it for throwing LED foam sticks in, etc. Below it, I have our old glass string lights, our glass string bistros we've since moved completely to these guys right here these are plastic and they're led so you don't have to worry about breaking them they're shatterproof and they're led they never go out i've been slowly like getting rid of all of the glass ones basically giving them to friends that want to put them on their back patios and stuff like that coming around the corner this is again kind of spare junk area manuals spare led remotes spare stuff it that's a junk corner, mic stands, etc. Now working our way down, this is the bag shelf. So all of these are four unit bags for all of our uplights, which are on the bottom. So there's a bunch of bags up here for our uplights. These are not the same bags that they make anymore. These are the Bow Flighting soft bags. They've actually upgraded the bags now. They're actually like a hard kind of plastic soft bag but they're rigid they don't collapse like these ones do so they protect your lights better but you can't do like what we've done here where we've shoved 13 bags shoved up here there's no way in heck you can do that with the new bags moving right along down here is battery world so we have two of the jackeries that pair with the two ceremony rigs we keep them over here for charging purposes i have all kinds of spare batteries for our microphones we have the new mark mixstream pro just chilling here in the middle because we don't really have anywhere else to put it we have one of our spare audio technica mics so this this is a spare like mic set up with a handheld if anybody needs it. Sometimes when we're doing ceremonies, we need a third mic as a handheld. So it's just a quick, easy grab. We have our gig tote. I have a whole video on these, but we have our spare gig tote and we have our spare cable tote right here. For the most part, all of my guys own their own gig tote and cable tote. I just have one spare one for anybody that might need it. Right beside that, we have a DMX kit. So this is actually the Show Express DMX kit. And then we have a giant Show Express box right here as well that um, we no, no longer use. So I guess if anybody wants this, let me know, but we don't use it anymore. We have the smaller Show Express box in there for portable stuff. This is a tote of painting stuff for house projects and stuff. And that's kind of where we're moving now is we're moving into the workshop area of the garage. But before we go any further, we have all of our up lights down here. These are all the both lighting S4s. And these are six eight unit cases, which is 48 of the both lighting all black S4 uplights. Plenty of videos on these. This is not all the uplights that we own. We actually store some of our cases in Raleigh with my other guys. So two of my DJs are based out of Raleigh. So we actually allow them to store some uplights over there because that is the most used thing that we use in the company is uplights at every single event. And with five guys, we need quite a bit of uplights. We take 16 to every single event. That's why right here, the cases are all set up here. Eight per case. We use eight unit cases and the bags are right there. Again, for the same premise of the movers there with having the bags for the guys to take them. All of my guys don't have really like good vehicles other than like they have like SUVs or Camrys or hatchbacks. So they grab the bags take the lights out of the cases and take them to their events. And if you saw my tips and trick video, all of these up lights, we have them coordinated with set A, set B, set C, and they're all plugged into this smart 
switch power strip. So each one of these, there's six plugs in here and each one of these plugs is individually controllable. I can turn each one on individually and it's smart. So I have Alexa routines set up that I can program on Friday to charge all these lights, fully charge them and not overcharge them. So I'm able to literally just click a button, one set, two set, three sets, and it does it perfectly. Highly recommend. We are moving right along on the garage tour. If you guys could, be sure to slap a like on this video. And if you guys have any suggestions for ways I can organize this better or things that you do, please leave them down in the comment section down below. I'm all about trying to improve everything that I got going in this garage. So let's keep on moving into my favorite section of the garage, the workstation. Before we get to the workstation, I have a step. Well, I removed the step that was here. This is how I go out the side door. While I'm out here, that right there is the condenser unit that powers that bad boy right there to keep this place heated and cooled. But right here, we have the heavy ass base plates. <laughs> These are ginormous base plates. They weigh 70 pounds each. And then we have 30 pound rubber plates as well. Six big base plates, six uh, big rubber weights. And it forms a perfect nice step to get in and out of the garage. If you're wondering, those pair with the poles that are back behind me, that is how we run our bistro lights at events where we can't have mounting points. Check it out, I got videos on how exactly we do that. These right here are from Georgia Expo. Georgia Expo also is where all of this pipe and drape poles over here come from and the drapery we're gonna get to in a second. So moving right over, we can't skip over the awesome LED sign right there. That is on a smart plug as well, so it turns on and off every day. But we're coming over into my favorite area, the tool area. And uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Everything on this pegboard is kind of organized. You got your saws, your squares, your levels, all the crescent wrenches, screwdrivers, wrenches, wrenches, clamps, etc. Little grippers, pliers, giant power strip here to plug in anything you might need to plug in. It's set up for efficiency because one of the biggest things when it comes to just in general, owning a home, owning a company, you're gonna need tools and being able to have your tools organized so that you can quickly grab, say, a Phillips screwdriver, grab a crescent wrench, grab a hammer, always in the same spot is huge for efficiency and making things smooth when it comes down to that. On top, we have the workbench. If you can't tell, it's been quite used and abused. It has only been in here for literally three years. It was brand new when I got in the garage. And um, this is kind of the workbench. So right now, these are kind of some of the stuff we're working on. This is a customer's uh, S4. It's uh, being charged right now because it had a battery issue and it would not charge anymore. So we replaced the battery and now it's running through cycle charges to make sure it works perfectly fine. Here are some spare motherboards and batteries and stuff for up lights. These are the new Mark IIs. These are the prototypes. That is gonna be coming out later this February. Shipping starts in March for those. I'm excited for those. I also have some Ryobi chargers mounted up on the wall. I'm a big Ryobi if you can't tell, and Ego person. So I have a lot of Ego products. This is my Ego turbocharger here. I got some spare batteries laying here. Um, and then I have my Ryobi six port charger right here for all of my Ryobi batteries. Random headlamp here and flashlight if needed. Quick little glance over. I got all the drills that I could ever want. Hammer drill, normal drill. These are the new brushless ones. I have an older drill over here. Sawzall, oscillating tool, socket, hand saw, reciprocating saw, corded drill, corded mouse sander, sander. Down here, I got my air powered nailers, battery powered brad nailer, got my router bits, router. That is an impact, a half inch impact, a light, random stuff stuff. This is kind of a random tool bag of random things. This is my electrical bag with all my electrical stuff to do electrical things. Let's see what else is up here. I don't even know what half that stuff is up there. I think it's, I don't even know. I think that's another socket set up there that I don't use. Some more bits, sandpaper, zip ties, paint, spray paints, all sorts of cock. All of my tape measures are right here quick and easy to grab a tape measure if you need it. Angle grinder, heat gun, hot glue gun, Ryobi. This is kind of some of the random stuff. I have all my lawn care stuff because I love making sure my grass is nice and green and beautiful, putty, random hanging things, more putty knives in the corner. We have a socket set, Craftsman socket set, drill bit set. This is like a Cat 6 kit. It's got all of the finer kind of things you need to run cabling when we're doing installs for with wiring and stuff. This is kind of like a wiring like go-to for like audio stuff. 
Then down below there, we got all of my car wash stuff to clean the cars. These are all the screw kits over here. So screws and random, I'm gonna say random shit. So screws, random screws, that all lives down on that shelf right there. Coming around here, I got my backpack sprayer for all of that fertilizer stuff. My table saw, I'm missing my paint sprayer. It's not here. Rock salt because we do on occasion get ice here. And if you notice, this is all on a wheeling platform. And also I have a foot mat here. You just have to have these. If you don't have these, get these. I'll link them down below. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon. Get them. I have them for everything. But this bottom shelf down here is on wheels because underneath that is where all of our base plates are. I don't even know how many base plates are down here but the majority of them are all down here. So whenever we need base plates, this literally just rolls out, rolls over, grab whatever base plates you need. And yet again, I'll preference, that is not all the base plates we own. There's even more in the storage unit. So as we come around here, there's a grass seed in this trash can right here. There's a trash can. And then this is kind of a project spare part shelf. So that's all electrical stuff. This is all plumbing stuff. This is all like doors and hinges and stuff like that. And that's more electrical stuff down there. The whole bottom one is. Uh, firecrackers, because you know you have to have firecrackers. That's the amp and speaker we talked about. In here is more random stuff for case builds. Up here is kind of projects I'm working on. So this is an electrical kit. There's some hangers here for different things, working on my shed, etc. And as I come around, this right here is all both lighting, open box stuff that we're trying to sell. So like I mentioned, I got used gear for sale and I got open box, both lighting stuff. Basically, all of this stuff is brand new lights that customers were not happy with. And not from the perspective of them not working, just they weren't the right fit for them. And what I'm trying to say is like, there's bags here of like lights and there's also these two briefcases. And in both scenarios, it was like the guys got the bags and they ended up wanting the hard cases on wheels like those, or they got these briefcases and they were too heavy and they wanted to go to the bags. So we basically exchange them with them. We get them the product they want, they ship it to us, and then it sits here for someone to buy at a discounted rate. So. If you want some lights, go check out the discounted stuff. Now, moving up top on Tool World, right beside the Mr. Cool DIY, we have a bunch of stuff that is kind of rare to use for the most part. Over here in the corner, we have, let's see, we have tiny leaf vines. We have some other leafy vines and some watermelon leafy vines. This is all like fake greenery. We don't use it that often, but we have it. Over here, we have black poly drapes. We don't have many yet. I do plan on getting more. And then we have white shear panels that go on ceilings. Beside that, we have five 50-foot strings of Bistro lights. So we have 50-footers and we have, there's actually another tote over there, and 25-footers. The 25-footers we take out more often. Beside that, we have four totes actually five totes in total full of drape. So it's all white banjo drape. Again, black poly, we're trying to get some more. Then we have all of our banjo drape beside that. Over here, we have the wedding show tote up top. So that has our banners and stuff that we use specifically for our wedding show trade show booths. And then below that is all of our TV cables. So we have a video switcher in there and we have a variety of HDMI cables, fiber optic HDMI cables, all that good stuff's in there for doing our video work, which is an area we're trying to expand more and more into in terms of doing video work for like corporate events, video audio work. So that will probably end up moving down here and become a bigger picture in the near future. And that's why I was talking about, we're probably gonna be getting more projectors. We're probably gonna be getting projector screens and some cool shit like that. And like I said, that is another tote of five 50 foot string lights. And then over there, that is random junk. On the wall back behind here, this is all spare cables. We try to keep all of our cables in like cable totes. So those are the spare, that's the spare cable tote. And then I have one personally for all of my gear. And uh, that's in my audio rack, which is at the storage unit. It normally lives in my trailer, but again, it's off season. So the trailer is empty and everything is in secured locations. We have some random like quarter inch aux cables, some DMX cables, some VGA cables over there. There's actually some raw cables there. So there's some raw cast six cable there, some raw 12 gauge speaker wire from installation projects. Those are all spare XLR cables, mostly like 50 footers for our big bigger events where we need a lot of XLR cable. Those are some spare um, extension cords. Not much, but something, and we keep it up on the wall. We just finished up January wedding shows and we're moving into February and March where we're doing more of the open house stuff at venues. This is actually our spare stuff. So these are 
gift bags that are branded with Fusion. Up here are all of our branded Fusion Sound and Lighting stemless wine glasses. Uh, we actually give these out to couples at our wedding shows and at our open houses. We give out giddy bags to all of the couples that come talk to us and fill out our form. I just have a couple of them here. Most of them live up in uh, that attic right there. Back in December of 2020, we went on to discountmug.com and ordered them and like the minimum quantity was like a thousand. So a whole pallet load of these showed up. I think we've made it through half of them. I think we've gave out about 500 mugs at this point, but like there's so many boxes upstairs and we also ordered a thousand of the branded Fusion Sound Line gift bags. These are just stacked right here for the time being. They normally live up there. I'm gonna move that because underneath that is all of our DJ controllers. Little dusty, but this right here is all of the DJ controllers that I own. So right here we have the Pioneer, and it's the first one because it's the most used. The Pioneer Rev 7. So this is the DJ Rev 7. We have the 1000 SRT right here in the silver case. And back here, the OGs will remember, this right here is the Pioneer DDJ SZ custom build with the ports on the side, etc. Really awesome. We have the Pro X T-top table right here. I love this thing. If you guys don't know about it, Google it. I'll link it down below. It's like 300 bucks. And basically it looks like a custom T-top DJ booth. All you have to do is put your controller on top. Boom, boom, ready to go. So for my like mobile events where I can't bring that giant thing, I bring this. I bring my Rev7, I bring T-top table, and we're good to go. That box is actually a new exhaust for my truck that's been sitting there for two years. It's actually going on my truck finally this weekend. Super excited for that. Moving over to the side here, we have the bad boys. These are the JBL VRX 918 subs. These are the JBL SRX 815 tops, and these are the sub poles with them. So this is the big boy sound system. Take it and go. And for you guys wondering when it comes to speakers, if you've seen my prior garage tour videos, I actually have downgraded in speakers, and that's mainly because we've only been doing weddings. And I've moved more towards like renting and also using our network of the DJs that work under Fusion, all the speakers that we have collectively. So I no longer have the PRX 712s. I have sold those to my boy Ralph. So Ralph owns the PRX 712s. He also owns a pair of ZLX EV tops and a pair of EKX 15 inch subs. So between all those, we have basically two systems there. My boy DJ Marcellus owns the Bose Pro 16 set that I have. So he owns both of those speakers now. I personally use the LD Systems Maui 44 G2s for most of my events. Those are currently in the storage unit. Like I said, I emptied out the trailer. Some of the stuff is here. Some of the stuff is in the storage unit. Normally, those LED systems, Maui 44 G2s, go right there where the Mackies are. I didn't want to move the Mackies out because I need a constant reminder that I need to film that video. And let's see, the Avante speakers, if you remember the Avantes, Drake owns those speakers. So literally, I pretty much have sold a lot of my speakers and we also, we used to own two Mackie subs, if you remember, we had two 18 inch Mackie subs. We sold those to a gym for an install and then we also had two Mackie 15 inch tops and we sold those to another person as well. I've really been trying to condense down on the gear that we do not use. That's why we have the whole entire page of used gear and stuff that I'm trying to sell. Moving right along, I'm gonna pull these out to show you what's behind these. Pull them out, pull them out, pull them out. Back behind here, we have our two 60 inch, well, they're 58 inch, whatever, Samsung TVs. So we have two of them. They don't get as used as much as I would like, but I mean, they've definitely been used like over 30, 40 times now, and they've more than made their money back, especially when it comes to some of the corporate events and stuff that we've been able to do with those TVs because we have those TVs. Then uh, sitting on top of it is our hedge wall. Doesn't get used as much as I would like, but it's definitely got used plenty to make its money back, of course. We pair those normally with custom LED signs. I really don't have any. I got one right there that says better together, but normally they're custom and then the client gets to keep them. We have two of these kind of collapsible poles that go with them. And then there's a bag down here that contains two base plates that go with that. So this is kind of the hedge wall kit to take out the hedge wall. Moving right along, this is kind of, um, more of household stuff and project stuff. So I got cleaning towels. I got a random spool of cable right there because I'm working on installing more of these bad boys in our ceilings. I have a full like Sono surround sound, like every room in the house has speakers, including this garage, which I'll show you guys towards the tail end of this video here in a second. 
But yeah, random water shoes. These are some spotlights for outside that I need to install. Coming around the side though, I do want to point out I have my mounts here. These are our TV mounts for the TVs. So they sit right here, ready to go. And then this is a box of random hardware. But again, pointing out everything is on wheels. This whole cart's on wheels. The speakers are on wheels. So that way we can easily roll all that out and get to the TVs to take them out to the events. And with the conclusion of that back wall, that is the majority of the gear. We're gonna quickly go through the last little bit over here, which is a lot of household stuff. But again, this side of the garage is meant to park a car. It's not normally full of any gear at all. Normally it's either projects or a car. So we got the deep freeze. Again, we put the deep freeze on a rolly cart so that it's on wheels. Again, the goal is always to have everything in the garage for easy cleaning and movement of stuff to move things around. Everything is either on wheels or off the ground. Up here, we have one of our little giants. This is the smaller little giant ladder. I have a random chair up there. These are some random household things. Again, there's my ego blower. I have all my ego stuff in the shed down below. This is project stuff down here. Some trim for the house that needs to be painted. There's the paint for it. The bigger little giant ladder, some brooms. Highly recommend if you don't have one of these in your workshop, a magnetic rolling sweeper. So you can roll that across the ground and pick up any screws or nails that might have fell down. Um, also, this whole track up here, that's a gator track if you guys are interested. It's on Amazon. We have the shop vac, the dehumidifier. So this right here actually has a hose that dumps all the way around there but that is the dehumidifier. So in the summertime, this helps that bad boy right there be more efficient by getting rid of the humidity in here. I know a lot of DJs that preach like, when it gets cold out, you need to bring your gear inside. They're not wrong, but the biggest thing that'll actually ruin your DJ gear when it comes to the electronic side is humidity. That is actually the biggest problem when it comes to electronics because humidity is gonna corrode those circuit boards. Same sort of thing happens when it comes to the winter time. When things get really cold and then you take them into a warm room, they build up condensation. So that is also a good reason to not store your gear in a really cold environment. So humidity and cold are the two worst things for your gear. Just a little pro tip. Beside that, this is my table saw. It folds nice and collapsed. Of course, it's a Ryobi table saw. I have an Ego fan. We actually use this for ceremonies a lot. It's super handy. It's really quiet too. Just throw an Ego battery in there. And then I, it's actually on wheels if you can't see. And I can wheel that to the ceremony locations in the summer and it helps a lot with staying cool. Up here is all of the pipe and drape poles. We are up to the point now where in combination of silver, again, these are all Ge Georgia Expo. They're seven to 12 foot tall and I have castle tops on them so that way it looks clean. All of those are, are uprights. I have a combination of six to 10 foots and seven to 12 foot sections. And then we have silver ones and all black ones. The black ones we use those more often because they look clean when we do the bistro lights with those base plates right there but i'm at the point now between drapery poles and uprights and everything we can do roughly around 280 feet of pipe and drape and we have done multiple days where all 280 feet are out or 230 or whatever all of these literally have gone out to events and like they're all out doing something with like maybe one or two laying around so really a good bang for your buck i would say if you have the ability to actually move these poles like you have a trailer you have a van and you can use these and you have the ability to pair that with your ability to do customary stuff when it comes to hedge walls or beaster lights. It's a really good investment to look into in your company. Then lastly in the corner here, these are kind of my fun toys. So I have my longboard, I have my booster board right here, some spare power cables and hoses. This is where the air compressor for the garage lives. I have this awesome reel right here that I can pull out and use it for whatever we need. Again, being the project side of the garage, it's in a great spot. And of course it's retractable. So throw it back up just like that. And while we're talking about that, I also have two retractable outlet reels in the ceiling. These are 50 foot outlet reels that I can just pull down at will to do projects with. There's one here, there's one over here. Pretty awesome to just grab it and go with the power. Again, everything in this garage is built for efficiency to make things very easy to do. So not having to go grab that extension cord, plug it into an outlet. All I do is literally just reach up, grab it and go. And lastly, it's kind of hard to see because the grills are black, but right there is one of the speaker and there's another speaker over there. And those are my in-ceiling speakers 
speakers that are tied to a Sonos amp so I can play music in the garage whenever I want. So I'm just gonna go to the Sonos app, give you guys a little taste. So yeah, it sounds, um, it's loud, it's really loud, and it sounds good. And because of copyrights, I'm not gonna play anymore. It covers pretty much the whole garage, it's super loud, and I love it. For you guys that are wondering, there are these right here, they're the clips. I bought a bunch of them back in Black Friday like a year ago. But anyways, that is the complete garage that we use on the day-to-day -day basis. Let's now go over to the storage units to quickly go through all the stuff that's over there, and trust me, that That'll be way quicker. There's a lot more intricacy in this garage, and this garage is what I basically said is built out for complete efficiency when it comes to everything going on in the garage. And it's still not fully done. I got some more things I need to tweak and finish. And if you guys got any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. But let's now go to tomorrow. We're gonna head over to the storage units. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, we are at the storage unit. It's actually tomorrow night and not tomorrow day. A lot of what you're gonna see is Christmas lights for our Christmas light company, but we'll quickly go through everything in the storage unit to finish up everything that I have when it comes to storage, warehouse, and gear. So to start off, this is a 10 by 15, or no, this is a 10 by 20, that's 10 by 15. It's all climate control, we got lights, it's awesome. So like I mentioned, this is the additional trussing right here. We have two totems, we have two of the, um, this is like the two meter, that's the three meter. My puppy back there wants to get through, but the ladder's blocking her. Down here, this is kind of stuff we're trying to sell. I have a JBL Eon 1 Compact, some ADJ Hex Pars, all that's trying to get sold. Again, so check out the used gear link. There's the other two Cold Sparks. There's Noel. Rain 12 cases, I believe those just got sold. Over here are our stage decks. We can do a 12 by 12 stage. This is the IntelliDeck staging system. Here's my audio rack. We have a Class D fire extinguisher for our cold sparks. Uh, more base plates. There's more base plates laying around here as well. And then the rest of this is kind of Christmas light storage, except for back there, the LD Maui 44s. So we went and got these big uh, storage um, shelving over here. Um, basically the way this is organized, this is all customer houses. So we install Christmas lights on people's houses and it's a service. So we install them for them. We maintenance them. We store them. We tear them down. Everything is taken care of. It's one price and it's the same price every year. So these are all a variety of houses that we did this year for the first year. These are totes full of extension cords. These are all the raw Christmas light parts and bulbs and pieces. Those are pitch hoppers, some marketing material up there empty totes, tools, trash cans, signage. This is one of our little tool chests. We got Noel, of course, 24 foot extension ladder, totes galore. Over here, this is kind of the nits and pieces, like you got a whole tub here of timers, literally a whole tub full of them. Those are some wraps for some columns, some mini lights, some raw extension cords, some jumper cables over here, more extension cords. These are all 75 foot extension cords, 100 foot extension cords. Those are all mini lights. And then, uh, of course, there, right there is the LD Systems Maui 44 G2s. Like I told you, I put some of my stuff in here, some of the stuff's in my garage back home, but normally during the season, this is all loaded up, ready to go every single weekend in the trailer. In the back storage unit, this is pretty much all Christmas. It 100% is all Christmas. So we have totes galore. All of these totes are mini lights. I believe we have 24 totes, 40 strands of mini lights in each of them. Ridiculous amount. These are all of our 60 inch uh, reefs, some stars, some big um, presents. There's some animated trees back there, arches and polar bears and trees and all of our bulk shits back here. This is all garland. There's a ton of garland there. These are all of our smaller reefs, more garland right here. But yeah, everything back here is all Christmas, all Christmas in this back one. Um, and then these are some pre-bulb multicolor. So yeah, there's uh, another shot looking into the 10 by 20 with all the totes all of this over here all this needs to get a little bit more fine-tuned organized uh we left a lot of these totes open to let them air out because they had moisture on them etc like i said it's all climate controlled in here which is nice and uh we'll eventually get all of that up on these shelving units right here but yeah that pretty much wraps up the garage slash storage unit tour of pretty much everything when it comes to equipment when on the dj side as well as a little bonus you guys got to see the christmas light business that we ran first year came in just over six figures in revenue which was extremely impressive for the first year 
really excited to probably double those numbers this year with more staffing and more people in place. Everything is just super exciting when you get to run multiple companies like I mentioned before and the growth is obviously just something that comes with it. I will say these storage units and a lot of the gear that's at the garage right now is not permanent because it's more of a temporary thing for a few years here because I do have an ambitious goal by 2025 I want to be building in or buying a wedding venue or a pri just a private event space. Let's just go with that, a private event space. And uh, more or less, I really want to just purchase land and build our own facility. With doing that, we can build out a big warehouse space for all of the company storage, our offices, and then we could also have a private event space. But a venue is my next business venture. Like I said, I got a couple years before I wanna get into that. Like I said, the Christmas light business just wrapped up year one, so we really need to solidify that business first. We're also launching a secondary arm to that business to make it more of a 365 all year round thing because of course Christmas lights it's it's like four three four months out of the year is when we're actually doing business for that so we want to launch something I'm not entirely sure yet what we're gonna be doing the guys have been talking about doing gutter cleaning and power washing because those are the skill sets that they already have and both of those require ladders so it's pretty hand in hand with the stuff and the skills needed to do Christmas lights I kind of want to do some low voltage stuff or hanging bistro lights because that also ties in with the fusion sound lighting and the Christmas lights together but yeah we're gonna be launching that in March slash April and start moving into doing more stuff year-round again to build that business up to be 365 on that note I've been spitting a lot of knowledge here and there throughout this whole entire video if you guys don't know I have a whole link down below it's the pick my brain link you guys can schedule a one-hour session with me to talk about anything you wish to if you want to talk about business automation CRM's workflows sales how I've grown my businesses etc advice with the link Link down below you literally provide me all your info I will actually stock whatever it is you want me to look into prior to the call a lot of guys jump on there that are business owners and I'll literally go on to your sites I'll stock you on wedding wire the knot your website look through all of your content and then give you some honest feedback and opinions on it and answer any questions you got if you guys want to do that check it out in the link down below but yeah if you like this video be sure to slap the like button comment down below what gear amazingness you saw any organization tips for me to improve this organization um, any gear you think I should look into buying etc let me know comments down below anyways if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button because I know like 80% of you that watch this video are not subscribed I want to get to at least 60k here in the next couple months so hit the subscribe button so we can get the 60k if not 100k by the end of the year and um, I'll see you guys in the next one oh keep them records spinning keep them records spinning and I'll see you in the next one peace